quick demonstration of where electricity can come from. Here we have a motor and it's connected to a light bulb. Turn it really fast. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of effort here. And you can see the light bulb just about blows. And in fact, the energy that's put in is very quickly absorbed. The motor does not want to spin. But if I switch off the light bulb, it spins quite freely. Mm. So it really shows that energy is being converted from mechanical to electrical energy. Electrical energy. Hmm. It can be a very, very nice little circuit. What we have is a circuit where we just touch two wires together, the lights turn on. I think we expect that. So there's a battery inside, there's some lights, you connect the circuit and lights turn on. What might be surprising is that it does this too. But uh, how's that happen? And why didn't it kill me? Because we're using transistors inside. Transistors are able to take a very, very tiny current as a signal to turn on a bigger current. Let's use that a bit further. Let's just go on here. Let's light up the sunshine. Give you some heat. Lights off our sun. Let's blow it out again. See that again? Mm. Heat lights up just like an old candle. Watch my hand, you can see really what's happening is I'm sending infrared heat rays to some little detector diodes here. Infrared detector diodes, and then what's happening is it's turning on the light via transistor circuit and a relay, and the hot light sends out heat rays down to these infrared diodes. And then when I block the light from the diodes, we can change electricity around. We can make it go from small to high voltage. We can go from DC to AC. Here's a small example. Here's the main radio. But I don't have a main supply with me, maybe. However, we can use this. 12 volt battery, but the 12 volt battery will not work the radio directly. What do we do? We use this thing, it's called an inverter. That's like that. What's happening? 12 volts DC is converted into 12 volts AC with four transistors which are playing a doubles tennis match. But instead of pushing the ball backwards and forwards, it's pushing the electric current backwards and forwards. Hmm, 12 volts AC, this, one, this one's AC. But you want high voltage. Let's use something backwards, this transformer. Instead of putting mains in and getting 12 volts out, we put 12 volts in and get mains out. There you are. So put that to the test and it works. Very good. What's nice is that we can use the same idea over and over again. Converting low voltage to high voltage. Same battery in here. We connect it to a similar circuit, just a bit smaller than the one over there. And we can switch it on. Just like that. This tube needs mains supply. Actually, I'm getting 500 volts out of this safety lighting circuit. So the safety lighting circuit with a safety hat has made this into an unsafety hat. How's it look? Also, what's nice is we can combine ideas together. So, if we turn this off, 
but now combined with a microphone circuit, which is inside here, it now reacts to sound. How good is that? We have a simple microphone amplifier, we have a simple voltage converter. You put them together with the help of a power transistor here and it works beautifully as a simple system. Let's play a little bit more. Same idea, yet again. This is exactly the same idea. We have a 12 volt supply, there is a circuit behind to generate a very high voltage, and the very high voltage is then able to operate this plasma disc. We need at least about 5,000 volts in the middle here. Same idea, three very, very different uses. And all these things are using a combination of electrical energy and magnetic energy. So, let's explore that further. This very, very simple thing is a coil of wire. A coil of wire is connected to a cable. Let's plug the cable into my amplifier here. What can it pick up? It picks up magnetic field. So if you go out to the light, it picks up all sorts of interesting things. I can even tell the time with my watch. But it does not work as a microphone because I am not magnetic. However, if I take the motor and generate some current, you can hear the magnetic field being created inside. This is very simple. It's a detector of moving magnetic fields. Now, let's combine this with another magnet and create something else in it. We have a coil of wire, we have a magnet, and this time we have a steel string nearby. The steel string likes magnetic fields, and magnetic fields like steel strings. So when we move the steel string around, we are moving the magnetic field around. If we move it quickly, we move the magnetic field quickly. If we change the string length, we get some nice range of sound. Let's turn up the volume a bit. There you are. So that is how an electric guitar works. So the guitar is just a moving string with a number of magnets and there's a coil around the magnet to detect how the electric field the magnetic field is moving. So there you are, a quick presentation of the choice of circuits. All very simple and all showing how technology can be done in the home.